Well, well, well. <laughs> We've got uh, an original film. Yeah. That's not based on another IP, well, not based on a book. Well, well, I'm going to stop you there for a second. This movie does bear a little likeness to a film called The Rejuvenator. You're experiencing some complications. And as we'll discuss, there's uh, lots of homage in yes, this film yes. to uh, many uh, different genres yes. and uh, filmmakers. <laughs> this might be our highest rated film of this year. It might be. Are you serious? Which I don't know what that says about us. You're out of your mind. Ain't it cool? Because of how fucked up this movie is. Yeah. And uh, disgusting yeah. this movie is. Have you ever dreamt? of a better version of yourself. Younger, more beautiful, more perfect. The trailer was interesting enough that we were like, this could be a fun time or it could wildly suck. Speaking of the trailer, <laughs> um, I think it's good to mention this. It's one of those rare instances where the trailer actually feels very much like the movie. Yes. You know, <clears throat> it, it took the same visual cues same editing style, they even have the same music, same music from the trailer, which, which most trailers don't have that. Yep. In fact, in the film, when she gets the little thumb drive for the substance. Yes, it's the same like dialogue from the trailer. Yeah, it's it looks just like the trailer. So I thought that yeah. was kind of cool that yeah. the marketing kind of melds with they the movie. They actually thought about it. They, they didn't did. just like pass the uh, film off to someone and just say, yeah, just cut a trailer for this. Yeah, exactly. Their thought went into it. I, so I really appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, not enough people like give movies kudos when they do right, that. Right, 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 right. This movie had such a fun, unique visual style to it. It's the best shot movie this year. Yeah, hands in, down. In my opinion. Yeah. The opening shot of the blue with the egg yolk and then the substance comes in and you see the egg split into two. Yeah. It's like, okay. There, I mean, that tells you everything you need to know about what the substance it's does. It's very simple, and they just give you a visual cue as yep. to how this is going to work. And then it goes right into a very unique segment of this top-down shot yeah, it's of a, her of, of the Hollywood star. star being created, and you see it from it's the very beginning when it's made, and then like everything's glamorous, glorious. She's standing on it. And she's at the height of her career. Yep. You know, the camera just stays there, and you just see as. Time goes by. The cracks begin. Yes. People walk by. Oh, I remember her. Somebody dropped some food on it. Yeah. It was a great visual representation of her entire career without showing her at all. Absolutely. It was just a, it was like a solid little short film. Yeah. And that was just the opening title. Yep. That worked really well. It did. It was cool. This movie plays out more like, almost like a fantasy. Yeah. Like as much as it is like a body horror film, which was great because it allowed them to create all these rules that were unique to this little world they created. And then they kind of like, they did things that if you tried to do it in a normal film, you'd be like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. But because you're in this like little bubble universe that they created, you kind of just don't care. You no, just go it, with it. You you go with it. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's just a, a film where you don't really question the logic of things. There's a few things which we'll get into. Yeah. But overall, you understand the world. You understand the tone that they're yes, going for. Yes. And, and then and, like you just enjoy it because of that. And they do such an excellent job with that. So not only uh, just with the story, but also characters that are really eccentric, whatever. You just you just go with it. Stop trying to control everything and just let go. Let go! All right, fine. And the film does a really good job at setting up the rules of the substance mm -hmm. and how it works, how you need to use it, and then what not to do. The movie's, of course, about these characters abusing those rules right. and the consequences they have to deal with. Demi Moore is fantastic. Yeah, this is one of those In movies it. where uh, <laughs> tour de force for Demi Moore, one of those Career things. Career defining Career role, defining like 61 role, yeah. years old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, as dumb and pretentious as that shit is, it, it it's is. true. Like, she's really good in it. She's great in it. I'm fine. It's cool seeing her again and like where she is in life, it's the perfect role for her. She fell into it perfectly. Yeah, it's kind of like Michael Keaton for, in Birdman. 60's the new 30, motherfucker. You know, right, right, thing, yeah, yeah. You know? That was kind of like his resurgence. Resurgence, but the, the character in that played a, an aging actor who yes. was known to be a superhero. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. So it kind of mirrored his life. Right. This, not so much like the, the Keaton role did, but this definitely does fit someone like an actress in, of her caliber at her stage in her career. Right, and that's why it works so well with this particular 
type of profession, actor, model, whatever it is, like where it's built entirely around beauty standards. Yeah. So as soon as those start to fade, obviously the uh, the high paying roles start to fade, you know, mm. and that, that does mirror reality quite a bit. The movie's about absurd beauty standards. It's about vanity, narcissism and all that shit. Yeah, that's um, the, the social commentary. Yeah, all the commentary the behind yeah. the film, which, you know, it works. It's very oh, like it's on the nose, but it works. Well, yeah, that on the nose nature, it just, this movie's like all about excess like, in everything. <laughs> yeah, in and, every way. And so if there's something that's like on the nose or a character that's just like so like fucking absurdly kooky, again, what it does best is just really gets its tone across. Yeah. So you're, like you said, it's just creating this little mini world and you're in it and you're just going with it and having a good time with it. You, right. you never question anything because you understand the absurdity, you understand that you're on a ride. Exactly, yeah. So Demi Moore plays uh, Elizabeth Sparkle and as you said before, aging actress, uh, she's kind of like a Suzanne Summer. She's got this like workout show. I love the burn you get when you're squeezing with the Thigh Master Gold or pushing out with the Thigh Master L. She finishes an episode and that's when we get introduced to <laughs> <laughs> fucking Dennis a career Quaid. Defining career defining role <laughs> for Dennis Quaid. You're hired. Who has one of the best character intros I've seen in a while. <laughs> so Demi Moore, she's done with the show. The The female restroom is, is it locked? It's broken or yeah, something. Yeah, the female restroom order. is like out of order. So yeah, she has yeah. to go into the men's room. And when she goes in there, Dennis Quaid walks in. <laughs> It goes straight to the urinal. It's all in one shot. He goes straight into the camera. Yeah, it's, it's like, like this like it's super like winding old yeah, lens. Like 14 like millimeter yeah. right in his face. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so it looks While like- While he's taking a lead. Yeah, and he's, <laughs> he's talking about how the bitch has got to go because she's hit the wall. <laughs> we got to get some new blood in here. At 50, it stops. And it's just so over the top, but it's it's great because it's right in your face. Yeah, like you can't and, escape it. And he's such an asshole and yeah. such a great asshole. Yeah. I like him already. He's a producer uh, named Harvey, yeah. which is of course just on the nose, but again, with the tone of this movie, it works. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, you know, once she gets wind of this, like, you're out, reality hits her. Mm -hmm. And it's like her birthday too and everything, so she's just like, well shit, my run is over. And you know, that's that's a hard pill to swallow for anyone who works in an industry where yeah. your beauty defines you. She gets fired basically, and they're looking for a new person to take over the, the show. A hot new hot young new person. new young dish to take over. People always ask for something new. She's kind of like distracted by all this. She gets in a car accident and she goes to the doctor and she meets this young guy who slips her this little like USB drive right. called the substance for her to like, wow, you'd be a good candidate for this. And then that's how yeah. she gets he's, introduced. He's examining her spine. Yeah, he just says, like, huh, yeah. you'd be a great candidate. Yeah, you got a good spine, yeah. okay. Whatever the hell that right. means. Right, he looks like he's made out of plastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, at first she resists it. She's like, no, I don't know what the fuck this is. She, she plugs it in, she watches it. And it's like you said, the ad from the trailer. Yeah. And it's very vague, of course. But it explains that the substance creates like a, a new, better version of you. Right. Now, this is where we get into what I had a problem with. Yeah, same here. Like one of the only problems I had, how it's sold. It's sold as this drug that unlocks your DNA and creates a new, younger version of you. But it's extremely literal. It physically does that. Like your body splits open and another version of you comes out. Yes. I'm thinking like, okay, so how does this work now? She's gonna like share a consciousness. They share a conscious, yeah. But they don't. Okay. Yeah. They are like two separate people, but you know, getting into the mechanics of it, she finally decides like, okay, I'm gonna go give this a shot because my life is just over now. And she goes, she gets the, the box of the drugs or whatever. And she, there's this whole scene where she's just, she goes full frontal. Demi Moore, which was bearing surprising, all. bearing all, which yeah. She still looks good. She still looks good, yeah. Uh, so she's, you know, she's looking in the mirror, she puts the drug in, and then you get that scene, which is just the first, like, disgusting scene, yeah. where her back, like, splits open, right. and the younger version comes out of her physically. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad they hit all that shit in the trailer, because you don't fully understand, like, it's creating an actual new person. You think, like, oh, it kind of, like, just, m like, mutates you right. into that other person, but it's not that at all. And that's kind of one of the issues, that it it's, it didn't actually create even, like, a younger version of her, either. No, it was a different, different person. person completely. Because they show photographs, footage of her when she was young, and, mm -hmm. and obviously she looked like a young Demi Moore. But, no, we get Margaret Qualley. Obviously, she doesn't look like Demi Moore. They're both brunette. That's about the extent of what they look like. This is when they explain the rules. Like, you get seven days on, 
on seven days off. So Demi Moore gets to be conscious for seven days, live her life, and then the young girl, Sue. I'm Sue. Gets to be conscious for seven days and go do what she's gonna do. They and switch places and they switch places by hooking up like a tube to each other. Yeah, like an IV or something. Yes, like they, they connect to each other. Yeah, and, and then, then they have like a feeding tube that yeah. just lasts for seven days. Right. And then they have to switch. And if they don't switch, there are big consequences. And Sue has to constantly take some spinal fluid <laughs> out yeah, of a, yeah, to, a little to like hole, stabilize her. A little hole yeah. in uh, Demi Moore's back yeah. to stabilize her. After she her. sews Demi Moore's back up, yes. which is like, she's not really bleeding that much, which was interesting. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. just has a gaping hole, her yeah. whole back's open. But she sews her up and it's like, you kind of think at first, like, is she dead? Mm -hmm. But no, she's just like unconscious or something. So th this is like where I have one of my only real gripes with the film is that it would have been more interesting from a character standpoint if they were kind of sharing a consciousness or at least the consciousness was switching bodies yeah. because Demi Moore her whole thing is like she wants to be young and loved again and now that this new girl is here she's just going out and living kind of her own life and Demi Moore is just unconscious for a week yeah. and then she wakes up and she's like Oh, what did I miss? So you're not really younger. You're not yeah, living the, your life again as a young person. She's supposed to be this aging actress who now has a second chance, basically, to be young again. Yeah. And like they don't explore that because, like you said, she's a separate character. But I agree with you, and I I think that from a narrative standpoint, for what the film was trying to say, it would have been better for that. You right, know, right, thematically right. it would have been better right, if because, like, they shared because a Because you think about like when the younger person is active, she's obviously loving the limelight. She doesn't want to go unconscious for seven days, but she has to because that's how the rules work. Exactly. And then Demi Moore wakes up and she's like, I guess I'm just going to sit and watch TV for a week. Yeah. The entire plot could have stayed the exact same. Yeah, nothing really had have, to change. Just have that element in there, which would have elevated it and made it better. Right, right. Now, the only thing that would have changed was like when one person wakes up, they kind of see the aftermath of what the other person was yeah, doing. Yeah, but there's really no consequence to that ever. Yeah, that's you just like, I mean? you're kind of annoyed for a few minutes. Exactly. Like, she left beer bottles they don't, around They don't something. even play with that as a device. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's there's, just like, anno you're just annoying the other person. Exactly. So but, if you're not going to do anything with that, you might as well just have them share the same conscience. Right, yeah. It, it, it would have been more impactful from like thematically and like from a character standpoint of you can't let that vanity go right like you're you're living the limelight again now you have to go back to being an old woman for seven days well they could have also added on to that as well if they shared the same conscious that just inherently she started becoming two different oh, yeah. people yeah exactly you know? yeah and that could have made it interesting too but yeah the direction that they chose to go with was i don't know kind of questionable the fact that they just are two different people yeah but i mean the movie is just so entertaining and so wacky like you just kind of go with it yeah but like it was in the back of my mind the whole time like well okay she keeps calling the phone number like oh yeah. you know uh can i like end this experiment or like or can yeah. i change things or like and you have a really creepy tech support guy on the other yeah. end yeah and he's, he's just like, like you are the same person yeah what's done is done what happens to you happens to her and vice versa right. you are one. If you want to end the experiment, you can terminate the yeah. clone, essentially. And she's like, well, no, 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 I, everything's okay, I don't want to do that. Everything's fine. It's like, well, th what's your motivation for not wanting to end it then? Because you're not living the life she's living. Right. Well, so, the fact that the voice did say, you are one. I didn't feel like it well, to her. Part, well, part <laughs> of me does feel like perhaps there there actually was some sort of like shared experience between the two of them. Yeah. And like they were just trying to perhaps from a narrative standpoint, that's kind of what the movie's about is like, getting lost in that other person like yes she is the same person but she's just kind of getting lost in it and she doesn't realize it. right right i'm probably looking too far into it i don't know but the the fact that like you know we're talking about this but the voice still did say you guys are one you guys are one yeah they kept, i mean i took that as just physically you're one one cannot survive without the other physically yeah yeah but they never really explore whether or not they share a consciousness because they, they like that would have been interesting yeah, it would. Yeah. Um, but they don't go there. They they end up treating them as two separate people completely. And uh, even though they are, they are one. Shocker! The chick can't even get along with herself, which is you know kind of <laughs> a little accurate to real life. <laughs> Now that we have young Sue, she immediately uh, catches Dennis Quaid's eye. She gets the, the job for the new uh, workout show, Pump It Up, and she comes up with some little uh, excuse for why she's got to be gone for a week and back, you know, so she could do the swap, seven right. days off, seven days on. And no problem, no questions asked. No questions <laughs> asked. You got it, Sue. We don't even need to know your last name. 
<laughs> Not a problem. It's no problem. It's like no problem whatsoever. Well, that's just how this movie works, and man. And you know what? <laughs> I thought about that after the movie. Like, yeah, how is this bitch getting paid? Like, she just ex came into existence yesterday and just said her name was Sue, and then she's cashing checks? Like, I don't think so. Yeah. But, again, because this movie feels like like a bubble fantasy, you, like, you yeah. kind of just go with it. A bubble fucked up fairy tale. Yeah. <laughs> of course, now that Sue is becoming this uh, really popular girl, she kind of starts to abuse the amount of time right. she's supposed to go back and swap with Demi Moore. She's really pushing the rules. She's pushing the rules a little bit. And uh, she pushes the rules by, a, by a, a few hours and then swaps with Demi Moore. And when Demi Moore wakes up, <laughs> one of her fingers has aged to the point where it looks like her looks finger like an old is hag like, finger. yeah, like, like she's a, like an old witch finger. Yeah, exactly. It looks like she's her fingers 110 years old or something, and she loses her mind. Of course, that's what she calls the tech support again. She's like, "Oh, can you reverse this?" And they're like, "Nope. Yep. What's done is done. It's mm -hmm. an equilibrium. It's a balance. But you know, if you want to stop, you could stop." And she's like, "Well, no, I'm going to keep going." And it's like, "Why? Why? You're not getting anything out of this arrangement. Right. Sue's getting all the limelight, and you're not Sue." It's like, okay, Again, is, your, is, your, it is your fucking vanity that insane? Well, yeah, but it would have just worked better if, if she they was were, the same if, person. Exactly, because she, she wouldn't want to give up on that. Yes. Instead, this, this felt like more like she was like a mom living vicariously through her daughter, yeah. but she's still not experiencing any of it. Plus, a mom that's living vicariously through her hot daughter, yeah. uh, at least she gets <laughs> to see what's going on. To me, more doesn't right. even get to she's see She's asleep it. the she's, whole time. Yeah, yeah, so she just yeah. gets to see the aftermath, like the billboards go up of her young herself and uh, all of that but she's not right. actually seeing it with her own eyes so <laughs> right so as this goes on she becomes so popular that they decide they want her to do the uh, the New Year's Eve show she starts pushing the boundaries further and further like oh no wait I got I got to do this I got to do that she starts pulling more of that back juice out of Demi Moore oh god it's fucking disgusting and it's scene. gross because every every time they show the needle in the hole go yes. in super close up it's like every time more and more infected yeah it gets and grosser and grosser and gross and pussy so she pushes it for an uh. extra week oh just a few more days just a few more days I got I'm, 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 we're on the cover of Vogue magazine like she's saying it like we're on the cover of Vogue Demi Moore is just fucking unconscious and then when she wakes up she's all fucked up like she's more fucked up like her hair's going gray yeah she turns she's into got a the, fucked up leg she turns into the, like the, the hunchback queen in, in, Notre Dame. in uh, snow white when she's <laughs> yeah. the fucking witch that's what she looks yeah. like so she's getting more messed up and she's like oh you fucking bitch like so now demi moore just resents her it just spirals and spirals until <laughs> Sue, she gets so fed up with Demi Moore, she abuses the fuck out of the rules so hard that she keeps Demi Moore unconscious for, I think, three months. Yeah. And when Demi Moore wakes up, <laughs> she is in a full body prosthetic. She looks like a fucking, like, like a burn victim. That's fucking disgusting. It's really messed up. It goes from David Cronenberg into <laughs> like Stuart Gordon, Brian Yuzna territory, like <laughs> reanimator <laughs> yeah. from beyond. Early, early Peter Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> like, just ex exactly. Like, so, you know, everyone's saying body whore, body whore. And of course, the first thing that pops in your head is David Cronenberg. And that's right. fair because there's a great deal of that. But sure. This movie is also an homage to like those like really like almost like B straight to video late 80s yes, early 90s yes. shitty like makeup movies yeah, you know yeah so you still have the quality of the filmmaking and now it's just getting campier yes but you don't care it's, it's awesome because it, it's fucking awesome <laughs> it's awesome yeah so now she's basically like Quasimodo and she's like okay I'm ready to end the experiment now that she is like beyond fucked up and she goes and she gets uh, the final vial which is like the just the terminate vial she injects Sue with the vial that's it you think it's done and then she has a change of heart she sees the big uh the the billboard outside the window and then again of course she's just like no she's got to go do it it's like oh, okay so she like does the uh the blood swap thing again she revives her and this is the the first time they're both they're both awake conscious at the, same time. at the same time and you're just like oh this is kind of cool yeah. like they're not experiencing the same consciousness now and they fucking hate each other right they get into this they get into this <laughs> insane fight dude this is like almost like the equivalent of the fight in they live yes you dirty motherfucker 
but with it's like chicks. It's like a fight with yes. two chicks in an apartment. Yeah. And it's 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 really great. It is. She like smashes Demi Moore's face into a mirror like 15 times. And you're like, well, she's dead. No. <laughs> she somehow manages to still crawl out of there. And then Sue tosses her across the room through and then, a glass table. Yeah, and then just like... And then kicks her to UFC death. UFC kicks her in the like side over and times. over and over. Until she's just like like just a bloody pulp on yeah. the ground. Okay, let me clean up and uh, go do my New Year's Eve show. And of course she goes to do her show, but she doesn't have the, uh, the, the fluid she needs to stabilize herself. She goes there, she's doing the dress rehearsal and her teeth start falling out, her ear starts falling off. So she remembers that she still has a little bit of the activator fluid. The studio is right by her apartment. Yeah. That's convenient. She goes She goes back to her apartment and injects herself. Now you, they're really fucking with the rules because... Well, the rule says don't... Don't do this. Yes. And don't, she's breaking Don't activate the twice. Don't activate twice. So... Not only is this twice, but it's... Activating the clone. The clone, exactly. Yeah. So she activates the clone and her back rips open and something new comes out. And now we get the monster mashup Sue and Sparkle in one. <laughs> and this thing is the most like campy B-movie fucked up. And it's all practical, by the way. Yes. Like 99% yes. of this film is practical. Yeah. There's a couple little like CGI moments. There's that only are, one. I'm sure that there's, there's more there, digital there's, there's things. There's two that, specific ones that we yeah, thought looked pretty I'm, shitty. And but, there might be more that were just really good that we didn't notice. But yeah. for the most part, this is like a practical yes. makeup effects extravaganza. Yeah. She's so fucked up looking. <laughs> she somehow like pulls the dress on yeah. and then she cuts out Demi Moore's face from a giant poster draws a joker draws smile a joker on it smile, attaches it to her fucked up head out of it, yeah puts it in her <laughs> fucked up head and then she goes back to the studio and you're like well this has got to just be in her head at this point but no, no she goes in and they're like oh it's, you look so beautiful. We're so happy to see you. And she's just like you could tell how fucked up her she's got like three arms she's like, like uh, 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 uh. <laughs> she goes on stage and the mask falls off and everyone's like <gasps> It's almost like a scene out of uh, it's like Frankenstein, Frankenstein yeah, movies, where, they, where, where the mob like, hangs up on the, Frankenstein. Yeah, the, the crash zoom in on the one chick who stands up like, Monster! Monster! <laughs> and everyone starts freaking out. And they start attacking her. And they start beating her to death. And then her body just turns into a fire hose blood cannon. <laughs> Dude. She just sprays the whole the audience. The whole fucking audience blood. just gets covered in blood and it just doesn't stop. Yeah, it got so and ridiculous. At this point, you're just like, this movie's still going. They had like three other opportunities to end it. It kind of does overstay its welcome. Yeah. But again, that's it's, just part of the ridiculous nature of the yes. movie. Just when you think it's going to end, it, it gives you a little Return of the King again. It just, yeah, here's another exactly. ending. Here's another ending. Here's another. I personally but was cool I with didn't it. care. No, I thought I, it was as great. much as I thought, like, yes, the movie could have been shorter, it kept going, but it kept elevating every right. time it kept moving forward so you just didn't care well the movie's uh, like about excess and all of this yes. and so that's just part of it yeah, you yeah. Know? she goes outside and just falls down and just explodes into a pool of blood and guts and then demi moore's face is on like this little gooey body it's and like just the blob and it yeah, just starts it just crawls over now this is one of the moments of kind of shitty cgi this is it, the cg moment it yeah. crawls over to her star and just kind of dissolves dissolves oh, yeah it's it, it like rests on the rests, stars and then it's looking up at the stars yeah it, the and palm then, trees coming up yeah la dream la dream hollywood dream and then it just and then she just dissolves dissolves and then like a zamboni comes over or something like oh like a street cleaner yeah, comes and over cleans it. and then just cleans it and it's just we're done all you can do at that point is turn to the person sitting next to you and say what the fuck was that that was the best movie i've seen all year yeah honestly <laughs> i think it is you know before we did this i was going through our reviews to see what our highest rated film this year was, and I, th I think so far it's Dune 2. Mm -hmm. This might well, uh, dethrone that. Rating-wise, this will dethrone Dune 2 for me. Despite the fact that they are wildly different films, I went 8.5 out of 10. Okay, well, so, I, uh, I too am giving it an 8.5, uh, which was what I gave Dune 2. Yes, yes. But yeah, man, like, I loved this movie. Yeah. I, I genuinely loved this movie. Yeah. I thought that it was solid. Like we were saying earlier, the filmmaking. A lot of the times when you make an arty movie, it's like, you know, when, when a movie's pretentious, they introduce like all these abstract, dumb, like kind of like Long Legs. Yes, Long Legs is sort of, <sighs> it, that movie is like aesthetic, so I'm not 
trying to say that there wasn't a craftsmanship that went into making it, but there's definitely, it's it's lacking in uh, scope and talent, I think. Whereas this movie, it is an already movie, but you can tell everyone that's making it is just super talented. Yeah. And like I said, the, the cinematography of this movie, the direction, it's, the everything. direction is fantastic. Female the, the, French director. Yes. The, the, uh, the editing of this movie is the best edited <laughs> movie I've seen all year. Yeah. All that stuff, all the technical stuff, 10 out of 10. It's just good seeing like, uh, you know, good filmmaking. Yeah. You it's know? written really well. Writer, director, she wrote and directed it. Yeah. And I was a little nervous because, um, I haven't seen her previous film. This yeah. Movie called Revenge. I've heard good things. I, have I, too, I, I haven't seen it. It still looks kind of like feminist bullshit. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah. so I thought that this was just going to kind of be more go that. that way. Yeah. And perhaps in her mind, those themes are in this film, you know, perhaps, perhaps in her mind, it's like, oh, well, you know, having these hot girls in this movie and like showing some skin, like that's just like, you know, a comment on the male gaze, the male gaze whatever. Yeah. But, if, but it was it, done in a way that her message completely failed because <laughs> with that, there, with that there aspect, is some yeah. TNA in this movie <laughs> and, and the chicks are fucking hot. And yeah. It's awesome. It's so good. But like that gratuitous, like you said, TNA, like maybe she was trying to say something about that. But doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because yes. we enjoyed it. But this this so, goes back to like, you know, kind of what we say about movies. It's like if if, if you're going to have like a, a left wing message or something in a movie, fine. But be subtle about it. Yeah, and that's kind of I mean, as excessive as this movie is. Like <laughs> yeah. it was subtle about things like that because yeah. it just it, I'm surprised whenever I see a movie that's not afraid to show skin. We didn't mind that aspect of it, but you know, like on the uh, on the woke scale, like outside of the excessive messaging, certain aspects of the film, like there really isn't much going on in this. No. That is kind of in your face. Like, yeah, like you get like all the piece of shit white guys and everything, but it's it's like everybody's kind of an asshole in this well, movie. So yeah, it's sure there's like your toxic white male, or whatever. And well, like, yeah, you get Quaid and all the stakeholders and everything. Yes, like, exactly. But it's just, it's, it's almost like it just added to the ridiculousness and the excessiveness of the film. Right. You know what I mean? It, right. it was, it, it, so it didn't bother me because they weren't single-handedly pointing at like, you know, right. straight white male piece of shit. It, right. it, it as, wasn't as, like that. As much as they're like, you know, using Demi Moore, uh, like tossing her in the trash, like, oh, at 50, it just stopped, you know, that kind of thing. Like she is culpable in her own way. Like she's still at fault for not stopping the experiment and going through with it because yeah. aside from the absurd beauty standards, she's tackling, you know, severe vanity and narcissism. Right. So, well, and, and the movie didn't like excuse her for that. Exactly. It didn't. And I liked that for, yes. you know, I liked it for that. Yes, exactly. So she still had agency. She still had she agency. She had complete control right. over her life. Her agency wasn't taken from her. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> which is, uh, which is all too much of an excuse these days. Or movies, just females are allowed to make one bad decision after another, yeah. but whatever. That's just uh, that because we live in a patriarchal society, <laughs> that's why, that's why it's okay that they do that. You know? Right. There was yeah. none of that shit in this right. movie. So yeah, for that, like the excessiveness of the messaging and all that, like it was built so well into this world that I, I'm only going, I'm only going 0.5. Uh, same here. Yeah, it's just too good of a film for that shit to to kind of get in the way. Yeah, the director is also one of the editors of the film. Really? Yeah, there's three editors on the movie. She's one of them, and that's wow. also with the case of her previous film, uh, Revenge. Revenge. So well, I'm gonna have to check out Revenge. She's now. got a very hands-on approach to the film. That's and great. It, and it and it definitely feels like that. You know? Yeah. Look at us praising a female director, our really? highest rated film of the year, a female director. Yeah, it's almost like wow. we don't give a shit. It's almost as long like as we don't fucking, fucking care good. if it's a woman or a man yeah. who makes it. As long as it's good. <laughs> yeah, And this exactly. movie is the best movie we saw this year. So yeah, uh, I can't wait to see what she does next. Yeah, this was, uh, this was solid. You guys need to go see this yes, shit. Yes, absolutely go see this, but be warned, there is some fucking disgusting shit in this movie. Oh, this movie's, okay. <laughs> I want, I want everyone to see it, but I can acknowledge right now, this is not going to it's be not for, for everyone. everyone. It's definitely Absolutely not for everyone. Not. So you guys might watch this and go, what the fuck were they talking about? Which yeah. I completely understand. But this was totally our cup of tea. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I'm so glad that like the word of mouth is going around now. Yeah. Like people are like, you have to see this movie. Right. I'm really hoping like weekend two is going to be stronger than weekend one. Yeah. And I think it might be, so. Well, and it, also when we were watching it, it's not like we're the film guys in the theater and we're like, we're the only ones laughing at this no, stuff. No, the whole movie, the whole was movie, theater, the whole movie yeah. theater was laughing. They could have, but the, the cool thing is, is once the movie ended, they could have hated it, but they yeah. still just thought it was absurd and funny. Yeah. Like they were going with it. Yeah. 
So I don't know. Uh, go see it. It's great. Big recommend.